What's up, Al? Hey, Damon. Nice to see you, man. Good, good, good. Nice to see you. Um, I'm going to read your bio right in front of you. Sorry about that. I no hate problem. doing that to people. <laughs> um, you know, when you're just sitting there listening to somebody talk about you. But um, having the background, was staying at a hotel with some friends in Miami Beach for a friend's birthday and then left their valuables under their towels when they went to jump in the pool. They came back. And their belongings had all been stolen. <laughs> what bozos. You didn't see the person stealing your stuff? No, no. It happens all the time. You know, you're constantly looking back at your, at your chair. You know, someone, <laughs> someone's, got, someone's got to stay back and watch you. You get, you get to, you're always looking back. Yeah. You know, you guys are up there. See, that's the problem. You guys are probably drinking. Oh, and you guys were in the pool and you were getting it popping. And somebody said, look at these bowls. Oh, my God, that's a watch. That's a nice wallet. Is that ostrich? Oh, that's a great credit card. <laughs> but out of your pain, <laughs> let's see what happened. Uh, they came back and their belongings were stolen. Realized that they had to be some way to keep items safe at the beach and the pools, but when unable to find a device or companies offering that same service, they drew up a design on some napkins and boom, from there, Aquavolt was born. Went on the Shark Tank in 2016 and we made a deal, fell in love with you three guys. Um, <laughs> um, pivoted when COVID hit. Uh, to help the No Kid Hungry Foundation and nurses who need to keep their belongings safe from contamination has since released new products and Aquavolt is gearing up for uh, travel to become normal again. Now, what I love about Aquavolt and the people, do you have one in front of you? You probably don't. Do you? No, I don't, but I can, I can definitely get it. <laughs> let me I see if I have one around here. Um, I can definitely get it. This is what I love about Aquavolt. You can put it on your, you can put, you, you put it on beach chairs. You lock mm -hmm. it up. You can put it on strollers. You can be somebody who's in a dorm. You could be, you know, uh, obviously a lot of people. And when it's locked onto the thing, the person has to take the whole chair, the whole stroller. And exactly, I love, I love that. I love the saying, "Everyone can get in the water," right now because you know on, we've all been there. All right, um, I'll, all right, honey, I'll get in the water. Somebody's got to watch, you know. Somebody's exactly. gonna watch. All, yeah, somebody's gotta watch all my Golden Corral gift certificates that I'm sitting here. I can't just go in the water and leave them around. Um, and everybody's like, show it. Um, and you know, you're, we should have we should have had one here. But it was kind of more talking, yeah. not about promoting the Aquavolt itself. Talking about you, talking about uh, your partners, talking about how did you shift? What did you go through? And what people can take away? You know, when we first started working together, you had already had rented a couple to the beaches and you, you were doing a small business, but a decent one. You were figuring your way out. And often you guys would get frustrated because I wasn't just unleashing the, the, the money, just dropping it on you. And then you guys were also, and a lot of people don't realize this about Shark Tank. People will go on to Shark Tank and depends on the deal that you cut with the shark or who the shark is or what their level of interest is, we will invest a certain amount, time, money, whatever the case is. And then we'll say, because, you know, a business constantly takes money to, to grow. So either you are increasing your sales and getting larger margins or you are getting various other ways to get funding. But the shark doesn't always just say, here, I'm going to pay for your purchase orders. Here, I'm going to do this. Here, I'm going to do that. I mean, technically, we are a bank in some sense, but we're also not a bank. A bank is doing that often. And yeah, maybe if you're Mark Cuban and you have probably six or seven billion liquid, maybe you're doing that. But also the funny, the challenge also sometimes with um, entrepreneurs, your own entrepreneurs are, well, if I invested 10,000, 20,000, 100 or 200,000 you, but you got a million dollars in orders and you need to borrow money on that. And then you're going to pay me interest on that there starts to become some level of feeling like a loan shark, right? Because that was none issue. Yep. Exactly. And the, the relationship can get hurt on the flip side. If you're an entrepreneur, you're like, D, give me a hundred thousand. And then you mess up with 75 and now you need more money. Well, I'm pissed too. Yeah. So we have that health. We had that little, Thing and it was a healthy conversation. There was never D man, you ain't you ain't nothing, uh, you know, whatever. And I was never like, guys, you're failures. 
you learn to work that out, man. You pivoted, you, you move from not only selling to, uh, uh, you know, resorts and stores, but also selling online and talking direct to your customers. And you and your two other partners, you looked at every single option out there, raising other money from other people, going to banks, going into your 401, doing, wait a minute, maybe we should educate ourselves better on social media and do that. What did you do? Where are you guys at today? And what can people learn from today as we are having this conversation? Yeah, so the first thing everyone wants to do when there's a problem is is try to throw money at it. And that's what we tried to do, but decided that the best way to do this was to kind of dive in and figure out how to do things ourselves that we were essentially going to pay money for to try to fix. So we started going on YouTube, learning how to do a lot of the advertising ourselves, learning how to do you know all the Facebook stuff because a lot of these agencies, they promise X and really deliver Y. And you know a lot of these people carry big retainers and, and big ad spend. So we learned to do all this ourselves. We got on the phone, old school, cold calling, and just really just handled business and tried to get into as many accounts as we could. And you know we just really just dove in. Uh, to this day, what, six years, seven years later since we were on the show, there's still us three running the whole business. We brought on one virtual assistant. That's it so far. So we have zero employees, but we have a bunch of sales reps. But it's still us three grinding all day, uh, day to day, handling everything. And it's really good being, you know, in the business all day, just really learning where the holes are, where, you know, inefficiencies are, where we're learning, what we could do better at, et cetera. So that definitely helps. Um, you know, we were on pace to actually have our record year. And then the pandemic hit and we're like, oh, my God, you know, travel business, what's going to happen? You know, obviously, a lot of concerns were flying up. But we said, this is temporary. Let's try to, you know, just go through the stuff that we really wanted to fix in time to just kind of brainstorm and see, hey, what can we do? You know, we are in the travel business. God forbid something like this happens again. How can we, you know, further protect ourselves and kind of pivot a little bit so we're not just solely in one industry? So we, you know, kind of sat there and said, we have a ton of customers, especially in the travel business. Let's try to create more travel accessories that, you know, are well, we already paid for, uh, we already acquired all these customers. So why not just try to remarket them and save a lot of the marketing dollars there to do that? Uh, we created a, a charge card. Did you ever get that uh, thing I said? I, I have it. I have it. Okay. It's really small yeah. and it's powerful. Yeah, it's a small credit card size charger. It has all the cables built into it. So you could use Android, USB C, and Apple. And it, it's just on the go. You can literally have it right here. And here, I'm actually going to grab one right here for you. Okay, okay. I was looking for mine. It was over here somewhere. It's actually this guy right here. It's the yep. size of credit card. It's got built-in cables right here. So you don't have to, yep. you know, sift through different cables. You can charge your, your headphones, your phone, your, your Android or your friend's Android, whoever still has one of those these days. But uh, basically, it charges everything. And everyone, you know, everyone's been there. You leave your house. You look at your battery. And you're like, oh, my God, I forgot to charge it or you know, your kid plugged out the charger or something the whole time. And this thing's come super handy for me. Uh, and it's been great, you know, so this alone has really taken off this year for us since we started selling it. And, you know, with travel coming back, we're super, super excited. You know, a lot of our hotel partners that are operating at 100% capacity right now, which is insane, insane to even think about. But, you know, people are traveling. Uh, I, I was just actually watching earlier today that the airlines are starting to you know, fill those middle seats again, and people are really excited to travel. And we've really started to see a, a big uptick in our sales, you know, going into the spring and now the summer. So definitely pumped, a long time coming. We're excited for things to kind of get back to normal, you know, I guess whatever that means at this point. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I, but I love, I want people to make sure we're very clear on this. You and your partners came from the finance world. You guys were working, you got real jobs. Uh, one of your partners has you now are dad as well, and I, mm -hmm. are both the other guys dads. I know, I know, John. John no, Rob. Right? Uh, no, Rob is Jonathan. Is in. Rob's got oh, three right. kids. I have right. two. Yep. We um, so, so obviously that had to have a strain on your relationships. You know, at home you have your fathers, you have kids. I mean, you're you know you became a dad a little bit after you started to figure it out. So this is not. I don't want people to think this is three little kids running around here that didn't have jobs that weren't doing it you guys are all in on this thing you guys figured this out um and i think that you made a good point a lot of people here are not going to pick up that point you know a, a companies uh, promise y and deliver z not because they are trying to steal from you but they have to figure it out for you right exactly. why wouldn't you take the time 
to figure it out yourself. Because just because I'm a digital marketer, maybe I, I know how to digitally market mosquito repellent, right? I know the mosquito repellent world. But I don't know the people who are maybe mothers and families or college kids or whoever, go or travelers. I don't know them. Mm-hmm. So now I have to educate myself on them. What are they thinking? What's keeping them up at night? How do I talk to them? What are the prices they're willing to pay? And I'm charging you just like if I was educating you on the mosquito world because I'm doing it. Why wouldn't you take yourself and your time to figure that out? You know, the 10 or 20 or 30 or $50,000 you're going to give them, that's money you just invested back into your company, Absolutely. right? So a lot. Right. So I think that's something critical that a lot of people have to understand that they have to do for themselves and don't let anybody else tell you that they can do all this. And I am not telling you they're liars, but they're just going to do exactly what you were too lazy to do. They're going to exactly. go and figure it out for you. And guess what? If they can't figure it out for you, they still are going to get paid. Exactly. Yeah, no, we, we uh, firm believers. I mean, the internet is a powerful tool. YouTube itself. I mean, the things you can learn from, from YouTube are, it, it's just insane. You know, we learned how to properly set up Facebook ad groups, market different ad sets, things that we had zero experience in. We took that money that we saved on the agencies and used it toward ad spend. We saw a direct return. And now it's our money being spent as opposed to relying on somebody else's reporting and telling us, you know, what is actually, you know, what the data is when we can actually see the data ourselves. So um, to this day, we only, we've learned to only work based on performance-based models with anyone we work with. Anybody who demands uh, some type of retainer or salary, we immediately say we're not interested because any, you know, anybody who's really good at their job and is confident in their results will, will agree to a performance-based kind of deal with you because, you know, in the end, if they're good at what they're doing, why wouldn't they want a piece of the action knowing that they could take, you know, scale you to X? So, We've learned that, you know, the hard way, obviously, going through different processes, but now all of our partners are on performance-based uh, marketing and advertising for us. So that's been, that's, a, that's, that, that's another great point. You have external salespeople, but just the right. three of you are running the business, and then you have uh, a, a, a virtual assistant. You know, that's a lot right. of people here, the first thing they're going to do when they get money is hire somebody, but hire them permanently where they got to pay uh, payroll taxes. They got to, yeah, you know, some places it. they're going to need to find a place to house them. But virtual assistants and external salespeople who are probably eating what they kill, they're getting exactly. anywhere from 6% to 15 or even 20% of what they sell. None of this is outlay of money, except for maybe the virtual assistant is by the hour and you can yeah. tell that person you want them to work one hour a week or 50 hours a week and they could be, uh, you know, uh, it all depends. You can, I've seen, I've seen uh, people give monthly virtual assistance for $300 a month and I've seen it as much as $3,000 a month. But none of these are people that you have to have on staff and okay. you have to be so concerned that if this happens, you have to let them go or they're not bothering you and saying, well, I need a bonus. I need these sick days. I need that. So right. I think that this is important for people to understand. We're in a world where you can externally hire um, a lot of people, not take the hit yourselves. And some mm-hmm. of them, you know, the more they make means the more you're making because exactly. they're commission based. Yeah, we believe in skin in the game, you know, all the way in terms of our sales reps. We have sales reps all over the world. And, you know, we just, we just, compensate them nicely based on their efforts because they're going out there and there are boots on the ground. And, you know, we, we took on a new partner in Spain. Uh, they've been great, but they're, they're just a much larger company, not really a sales rep, but, you know, Spain, Greece, Italy, we have people at these locations pushing the product and they deserve every bet. They speak the language, they're there, they're going to the meetings. So we, we definitely comp- compensate them, but there's definitely no guarantee as to, hey, you know, no matter what, we're paying you to go out there. It's solely based on performance. And it really adds that fire to anybody. And anyone who actually does not agree with that model, we prefer not to work with because you have to see the upside in the business. Anyone who's working for a salary, we really are not interested in, in working with, at least in the capacity where, because we're still in that growth phase, you know, we're still high growth. So we want, um, you know, similar aligned individuals working with us uh, towards that goal about getting our products everywhere. Um, and so a lot of people may say, well, how am I going to get a person to work damn near for free? Well, think about the type of people. You sell something called Aquabolt, and it goes mm-hmm. on primarily for travelers 
And the, the one place that everybody sees it is on the back of a lot of uh, lounge chairs in, you know, in, on beaches and various other mm-hmm. things. So uh, somebody will say, well, how do I get somebody to do that? Well, why don't you find the person who's selling the umbrellas to those exactly. people? Or why don't you find somebody who's selling the chairs or rent or doing this and that? And they're already talking to that client. And they're mm-hmm. like, yes, you are. You bought a thousand umbrellas. No problem. Oh, by the way. I have something else that would be exactly. very beneficial for your customer. It's called Aqua Bowl, and they're already talking to that customer. So what does it do That's to them? Right. I'm going to make more money. Also, my customer is going to feel like I bring more things to them. I'm the candy man, and you're going to be able to ship it, and it doesn't compete with what I currently have. Exactly. I mean, there's plenty of upselling. You already have the customer. Uh, we target a lot of beach furniture companies and, and outdoor furniture because they're pitching hotels, you know, lounge chairs already, why not throw in this extra product? And, you know, these, these people also want a reason to go back to their customer with something new and exciting. They don't, you know, they, they want to find a reason to keep the communication open. They're not following up on their existing products, but it's always nice bringing something new back to their customer, right? So it keeps them engaged. And as far as sales reps, I mean, we put basic ads out. Funny enough, we have people reach out to us all the time, especially after re-airs on Shark Tank. And believe it or not, it's like clockwork every time. It's like, hey, I live in X location, I'd love to sell your product and, and take it to my local beach. There's seven hotels I could walk door to door. You know, I'm retired right now. I'd love to go ahead and do that. So there's just plenty of people who go out there who just love it, you know, and it's, it's come, an extra source of income. Man, come to think of it, do you have a wholesale something? Because if I was a kid working mm-hmm. a beach town, the Jersey Shore, I would set up a little stand with all those people coming out there with aqua vaults and because if I buy it from you for whatever price and I make $10 a unit or $20 a unit, nobody else is selling it. Everybody else is selling bottles of water, towels, I love Jersey Shore t-shirts, whatever, <laughs> jerky, beef jerky. I would actually call you and be like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars and I know that's $2,500 worth of sales or whatever yeah. the case is and sit yeah. outside and just sell it all day and you know, and talk to people, you know what I mean? Agreed. I mean, we have people in the, in the Caribbean islands that literally buy the units from us and sit there and rent them at the beach to people. I mean, their return on their initial investment is, is made literally in one day, two, two busy days. You know, cruise ships come in, you know, people have their passports with them. They don't want to leave it there. I mean, theft is insane. So to rent this thing for five or $10 a day so you can enjoy the beach with your family, it, it's just a no brainer, right? I mean, a lot of theft just happened. Grab and go. They see a bag, they see your wallet, they take it. No one's sitting there trying to, you know, really cause a scene. So people who don't use it are actually at risk. And, you know, I, when we did that update, you saw the, uh, the city of Miami, they came out and said ever since the products have been out there on the beaches, theft has gone down. I mean, that's a, that's a really big milestone for us. And theft has really dropped in certain areas that the product's been out. So, I mean, to the average person wanting to make some extra money, first, you get to be at the beach, which is great. It's better than being in an office. And, you know, it's a great source of revenue. And uh, anyone who's good at sales, it's it's a fantastic business model for uh, for a distrib not a distributor but a sales rep to kind of go out there in different regions of the world and pitch it. So yeah, in closing, man, I, I definitely appreciate all that. Um, you should really try to find out who that person was who stole mm-hmm. your that day, um, and really oh, send you. them a really <laughs> great great bu- whatever a bouquet or something. Because you never know where inspiration is going to come from. And maybe that person's <laughs> running around here toothless, excited, you know, <laughs> stealing other people's crap. Um, so, yeah. All right, All right brother. So, anyway, thanks, thank you. Thank you for telling everybody about how travels. Yeah, yeah. Out. Thanks for yeah. listening. Yeah. Absolutely. And good to see you, man. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.